but it's it's a good baseline for where we're at. It's gonna be from an enhancement shaman point of view. Um, we're gonna use separate videos for two of the bosses, um, just because their point of view um, I don't care for in those fights. Um, so we'll run through the trash uh, and the bosses, and we'll kind of go over that. We'll do a little bit of skipping because I do have a few wipes in here, um, but we'll talk about that too. So just making sure everyone can see. Okay. Awesome. Here we go. Okay, go. Versus right, SSC review. This is when you first come in. Uh, there's uh, pole. From what I can tell in the other videos, we when we did this on the test server, there were mobs at the entrance. I can't find any video of that being the case. Um, I think Bio, you went in there. I don't think there's any mobs at the very entrance when you come down the elevator. I think this is the, actually the first pack that you run into. Um, so these packs here, there's going to be a few of them. There's three of them up to Hydros. There's uh, the... Um, the beast tamers in the middle. Uh, there's accompanied by two spore bat pets on either side. That's the moon and the square, uh, and then two of these uh, hate screamers, the ones that are bookending the group here. Um, the way they do this pull, I don't like, uh, just because uh, they kind of ruins their, ruins their control a little bit. So the beast tamer uh, is just a like a hunter basically, uh, but he he cleaves instead of using a bow. So um, he'll be tanked facing away from the raid. Uh, his big so, thing is that uh, he enrages uh, and enrages uh, one of the spore bats at a time, uh, causes them to do more damage, and um, makes it so they can't be CC'd or anything like that. At the beginning, you can actually CC them when they're not enraged. You can sleep them, you can sheep them, which they're going to do. Uh, but then what happens is um, you'll see that he enrages, the pet, it breaks out, and it just charges someone in the raid. It hits them because there's there's no aggro on it. What we're going to do is we're just going to pull all together in AO, and, and uh, not AOE. We're going to pull it together, um, and we'll uh, single target our marks, and then we'll, then we'll AOE. The hate screamers um, themselves, uh, they do a couple of things that you need to be mindful of. So, one, they have a big AOE around them that they do a silence. So, you need to make sure that... They're, they're tanked away from the raid. Um, when they do this first pull, it's going to come up here and it, it's going to cause an issue for like the healers and the casters. Generally, where the group is at now, that's where the range and the healers want to be. And about the distance of where that group is is where they're going to be tanked, maybe a little, just a little bit closer. Uh, the second ability they do is they do a, an arcane blast, but it's not like a major arcane blast. It actually, it does damage to everything in a line. So it's like a, it's like a fast projectile with anything between the the hate screamer and that target will get hit so the range and the healers you just want to like you just want to fan a little bit it's not a big deal and i think the line itself is pretty small so like if you need to stagger a little bit or be staying in front of people it's fine and it's not just gonna ko anybody but if you get hit by one of those and like a bat charges there could just be random deaths that are going to happen as a result of that it may just happen and that's just kind of we just deal with it but um that that it, the only way to avoid the charges otherwise are one of two things. One, you CC the ads and you pull this guy way back out of rage range, which doesn't make any sense really for me. Or um, you have everybody stacked, but then everybody gets silenced. And I, uh, I think that's dumb. So um, anyways, we'll go ahead and watch the pull here. Like I said, uh, what they're going to do is try to CC the ads. You'll see that happen. They're going to focus the skull, which is what we're going to do. Uh, just because the enraged spore bats are a pain in the ass. Um... And then it'll break out, and I think a few people die because of a result of that. Um, I want to be careful. This ramp leading here, this is it's just a one direction to the boss. So um, there's a uh, a giant uh, like underbug colossus that comes out, and that's very uh, it has no threat on it, so it starts hitting like a warlock very choppy, or whatever. Uh, and it takes them forever to get it back down here. Uh, but if you just aim from the start, it doesn't threat drop, it charges, but then it keeps the threat. So, well, the beginning, it should just be able to stay pretty easily with us. Um, yeah, so, uh, the group's pretty easy otherwise. Um, I think the, yep, the whole raid got silenced here, so nobody can cast. So it's going to be important that we keep those pulled away. It's going to be on the tanks, though. But healers and, and casters, you need to make sure that you're not just moving in range. Uh, for no reason, you shouldn't be moving up to like arcane explosion or anything like that uh, because you're just gonna get silenced. Get 
gonna run up to the top of the stairs? Is it super choppy for anybody else? It's extremely choppy. Uh, you wanna Let me try to... Like 480 or something. 480? Uh, 720? Sure, your choice. I think I had the FPS at a different rate. Let me try to change it here. He does not. I have it pulled up on my sh on my screen on this side, so I'll just pull that one up right, instead. That. Yep, that's a, that's a Versol. Is it still choppy as fuck? Uh, all I see is a Thundercat. I'm streaming. Oh, there we go. It's so it must have been my end. Yeah, it's still pretty choppy, but slightly better. Alright, I'll try one more time. Hold on. And we can still see what's going on. If we can't find better, it'll still work. Hold on one second. Okay, let's try this. 8.58. A lot better, but still a little choppy. Oh, whatever. This seems the best way to come out, yeah. Is this the right stream? No, this is not. No. Yeah, this is a lot more watchable. So these Underbog Colossus, there's a few of them on the way to the boss. I think just two of them, and there's a couple. There's, um, they're with throughout the later parts of the dungeon as well. Uh, as these big guys up here, they're 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 split into three types, and you can't tell which one it is just by looking at them. They're not visually different, uh, but there's three different types that they could be. Um, one is the frenzy one. It's very easy. Uh, it's easy to see first two. He just gets a frenzy buff. That can be trank shotted, uh, and the boss also places when he has that places a stacking debuff on the tank that will reduce uh, their uh, stamina and I think strength. So it's something you want to kill quickly if it happens, um, but it it's the easiest one by far. Uh, the next one is, and I believe it's uh, this one here is the um, I want to say it's the quake one. Let's see which one it is here. Oh, maybe they never even get off a, a special ability. Um, there's a second one that is, let me pause it real quick. Um, it does a infection on someone. Uh, it does uh, like a few thousand damage and then jumps to someone else every couple of seconds. That one, if we get that on anyone, so if we get an infection, uh, then it's always going to be Quake. And what he does is he'll just stun everyone around him uh, within 30 yards and then take a bunch of damage. So um, it's going to be kind of positional here. So if, if someone gets an infection, it always, ha always happens before the big ability. We can call it out, and ranged and casters just need to be max range. Um, the second type that's the, I guess you can call the dangerous type, uh, is uh, the Acid Geyser, and that's accompanied by Parasite. So... Uh, with this one, uh, he'll do uh, a parasite to a single person uh, that causes them to take a dot, and then a, a parasite will spawn from them. If that happens, it's going to be geyser, and that looks, and the model and like how it works is very similar to how the boss in SSC, the end guy, looks like this works, where he'll target someone and he'll spray them, and anyone that's in a cone in that direction will also get hit. Um, from the videos I've seen, it, it's, it's hard to tell. You may be able to range it, but I don't remember that being the case. So what we will likely do to be safe is we're, when we fight these, is we're gonna look for one of three things. So if we see a frenzy go up, we know we're safe. There's no, there's no concern for range. If um, the infection goes up, then we know that we just need to stay max range. 
Uh, and we'll, it's going to be Quake eventually. That's going to hit all the melee that just need to be healed. Uh, if we see a Parasite, if we see Parasites going out, all of the range in the casters need to run into melee range. Um, when he targets someone, whoever he targets needs to run through the boss, not around the boss, directly underneath and through the boss because he doesn't attack, he doesn't move, he sits there and channels it uh, where, to where the tank is standing, all right? And that's going to make sure that the whole raid doesn't get hit. Now, I've seen the damage it does, and it's not... It's probably not going to wipe the raid or kill very many people if even the whole raid eats the whole thing, but to be safe, that's how we're going to play it. So we're going to look for Parasite or Infection, and then we're going to react accordingly. Um, now, when they die, um, one of, like, five things can happen, uh, and that doesn't have any relation to what type of the first three it is. So... Worst thing it can be is a giant pool. I think the second ad you'll see that. Uh, it's a giant toxic green pool. Um, if that happens, it does a ton of damage. It's like 2k damage a, 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 a second. That just like hits everybody that's in it, and it's a big area. And where there's a little bit of issue is like on ramps like this, or maybe even at the top here, it will be bigger than it looks like because some of the textures will clip it. So my recommendation is whenever the the boss is getting low um maybe just like a couple of percent left i would say melee or if it's earthquake and the range and healers are in there you just start moving out like you, you don't wait you just you just you just start running away protect like assuming it's going to be toxic pool because the other thing is is that there's going to be other things that happen that you probably don't want to be attacking right away anyways so the next thing that can happen is uh, this one i think is the bunch of ads yeah so a bunch of these little ads will spawn um and you don't really want to be DPS them right away anyways because we want to make sure they get they collected by the tanks. Mostly it's going to be Chetty, but um, you want to wait until they get picked up. They do have a decent amount of hit points, so you don't want to just go crazy right away with AoE because if they start running all over the place, it's going to be really annoying to pick up. they got 125,000 hit points. We'll AoE it down pretty quickly because we have a good amount of casters, but just give it a second for him to get threat with that. Another thing that can happen is um, instead of a bunch of small ads coming out, there be two big ads, not as big as him, but bigger ads that come out. Those are just, they just get picked up by the tanks. But again, you don't want to DPS them instantly. Uh, you should be instinctually moving out if you're melee uh, so that you're you know, get, not getting hit by the pool. Um, but if you accidentally hit them right away, uh, I think even this shaman later in the video, he opens up on accident on uh, one of those and just gets like a wind fury crit, turns around and kills him. Um, entirely his fault. If he just, you know, just backed out at the last percent or two, then he wouldn't have attacked the ad and he wouldn't have pulled aggro. Not going to ever wipe the raid, but just easily avoidable deaths. Um, those are the bad things. Um, there could be blue mushrooms that drop and those mushrooms are actually good. So if the blue mushrooms drop, they actually have uh, regeneration for health and mana. So you can just move up into them and drink and eat whatever you need to do. Um, and then last of all, it could just be nothing, like just nothing will happen if it dies, um, which is, I guess, the second best thing. So just alternating for these packs, moving up to the first boss, uh, just get another one of these packs here with the, the Beast Hunter, uh, Beast Hammer, whatever, I'm sorry, the Spore Bats and the Heat Screamers. Uh, packs of the same size and even the same orientation uh, moving up to the boss. Let me go ahead and go for just a little bit to get to the next ad here. Yeah, so the next Colossus that's coming up. I think this one is the poison one, if I remember right. For the death animation. I'm trying to see if I can see the debuffs. He doesn't have debuffs showing on the raid, so it's kind of hard to tell when it's going to be a certain... Uh, Boss. I wish he had Debo showing on the raid. Uh, this one actually is Enrage. I can see on the boss there was the Enrage on here. So this is Frenzy. Yep, it's uh, the Poison Area. It's actually even a little bit bigger than it looks. And you can see the raid just getting demolished by that. So that's why I say when it gets to the last couple of percent, if you're melee, just start backing out. 
Like, um, don't assume that you're going to get healed. Um, it's not worth it for you to stay in and, and kill kill them. It, that's just protect yourself and get out the last couple of percent. Um, it'll be more packed before the boss there. Does anyone have any questions or need any clarification on these mobs before the first boss? I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, do need to skip forward though. They wipe, I think, like four times on the first boss. And let's see, let me see. I think it's up at like 46 minutes. Somewhere in there. So, Hydros, uh, before the fight even starts, there's going to be these ads that control from one side to the other, these elementals. They're just on a track. Um, you don't have to kill them until you're ready to start the fight. Uh, they get to the middle, he just changes them from the, uh, the, the nature one to the ice one. Doesn't really mean anything. Uh, when you pull the boss, they don't aggro, so these ones that run past him to go to the other side... They don't come in, but any of the ads on the right that are already spawned, they're gonna keep coming in, and you'll you'll have to pick them up. And uh, that they're very easy. They're um, they die very quickly. They don't have any special abilities or anything like that. So generally, we'll just pull. We'll clear a couple of them. We'll pull. Um, I will pick up those ads. The initiator, when he's on that side, which is the frost side, is gonna be cash. So he's gonna be picking up the boss. He'll be uh, feral charging in. Um, it's important that nobody does anything for like the first second except for cash don't throw any curses don't put up any dots i wouldn't even heal at all like until you see him hit the boss the boss gets stronger as it stays longer on his side so at the beginning he does like no damage it's it's probable if cash puts hots on himself he could probably take like 10 hits and not die so you don't need to pre-hot him. You don't need to put a shield on him. You don't got to put anything on him. And well, you probably put like Earth Shield because that actually gives him threat. But like, just let him get it because if he misses and then it runs across the line, we probably, well, we probably don't wipe, but it would just be annoying. Uh, so just don't do anything. This fight is completely about threat and threat management and just knowing when not to cast or what to do. Um... The, the second hardest part is just making sure the tank lives right before the transition. And so that's that's it. If, if people aren't trying to like push damage when we're trying to do a phase change or not watching their threat because the boss is not tauntable. So just if people are not paying attention, then we wipe. Now, the boss in his first phase, he has, he's different on each side. So on his frost side, um, he has... Basically, he has, like, one ability on each side. Um, on the Frost side, he does uh, Water Tomb, which will target a random person in the raid, uh, and it will stun them. And it also does a bunch of damage, and it stuns anyone else that's within eight yards of that person. So you want to try to stay spread. It's not important that everyone stay, you know, more than eight yards apart. Area is kind of limited. If you are close to one other person... Like, maybe it's better to stack on two people than try and, like, stand, you know, less than eight yards from, like, five people, if that makes sense. So if you're running out of room and there's not just not, like, space, try, like, stacking on one person to create more room for other people. Um, when the, every, like, I think it's 15 seconds, uh, the boss will have a, 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 a buff that he places on himself. That causes him to do increased damage. So, like I said at the beginning, he doesn't do any damage. But, um, as the stacks come up, he'll start doing... The first stack is, at 15 seconds, is 10% more damage. And then he'll do 25% more damage. Then 50. Then 100% more damage. And then, where you... That's kind of like the outside of where you really want to be at. When it gets to 100... That's more or less the signal to move across to the other side. So the um, cash or whoever's taking it at the time is going to be moving between these two flags. So he'll be pulling the boss back over to this side, and that will cause the transition into the second phase. So uh, we'll go ahead and watch the first part of the phase here. Generally, when we're doing cooldowns, I don't know why they popped uh, drums early. Like It's like 10 seconds wasted there. But... Um, Generally, 
we're going to be using um, one misdirect per um, transition, with the exception of the first one. We'll probably use two first misdirects because this first side, there's no ads or anything, which we'll see later. And this is when we're going to be using our cooldowns. So this first phase is when we're going to be putting in the most damage into the boss. Uh, so you want to be using your cooldowns. You want to make sure that you're having adequate spread. Uh, you need to be watching your threat. Uh, if you get close, uh, then you either need to stop DPS um, or you need to drop it somehow. Or if, you know, I, I, if you're super close and, you know, you have something up that might pull, I don't know, a dot or something, maybe it, I, I, I'm going to say for at least the first couple of weeks, I'm going to kind of ban Curse of Dooms just because a poorly placed Doom um, in the phase transition can, will wipe us. So until we get a couple of kills on our belt, I would prefer that people just not use Doom at all. Um, just use Curse of Agony. Um, when we are getting ready to switch, try to have it so that your dots fall off prior to the switch. So we're about one minute in the first phase because it's 15 seconds per um, uh, per buff. And then after the fourth mark is when we look to make our move over. So try to time out your dot rotation for that if you're using dots to have them fall off right around 100% because that will make sure that the, it's not on when it's transitioning. If you have like a weaker dot, it's not a big deal. Um, like immolate is fine. Um, but like these, these, you know, Curse of Agonies are getting closer towards the end of their life cycle. Those are probably going to be doing some more damage there. Um, you probably don't want Shadow Word Pains on there, you know, so just be mindful of that. Um, and nobody should be attacking at the transition at all. Like they shouldn't be auto attacking. You shouldn't have a pet on. Another big thing, um, uh, Searing Totems, uh, either do not use Searing Totems at all, or uh, you have to remember to recall them prior to transitioning. Because the boss, when he moves over, um, you know there's some weird shit with totems when you try to lay them down, like instances and stuff like that. I These guys actually wiped three times before doing this attempt. Uh, two of those were to um, Searing Totems. The boss would transition over, you drop threat, and then immediately run across the line to go attack a Searing Totem, and it would wipe. Uh, when the boss transitions um, each time, he will spawn these four adds. Uh, the tanks are going to work it out uh, so that um, Chetty's going to tank three of them. So essentially, he'll be right about here, dropping Consecrate, picking up two. Um, the other tank who is switching, so in this case, I would be taking the boss now because I need different resistances. Cashew picking up the ad that's on the left while facing the boss. So he'd be grabbing this one here. Um, all DPS should be on the ads. You should not be tank, you should not be DPS on the boss. You should be giving time for the tank to be a building a threat. There will be another misdirect. That will be the one ex exception is there will be a misdirect that gets applied to me or whoever's transitioning um, on the boss just to get that early threat. And most of the healing at this moment will be on, uh, on Chetty. Again, the boss doesn't do much damage. These adds can do a decent amount of damage, and he's only running a half resistance set. So he's going to be taking more damage, and probably even uh, Cash, because he won't have any uh, poison resistance, is probably going to be taking about as much damage as I am at the beginning uh, from, from these. It doesn't hit super hard, but he won't have any resistance. So um, be mindful of that, healers. In, um, they are CCable, however... Uh, prefer not to use it unless we call for it. So you can fear them, you can banish them, but if you do that, it sets us behind on the clock. Because what we want to do is we want to kill these as fast as possible in most cases. Uh, and so we got to make sure we group them up, kill them quickly, especially before the boss starts stacking the the the, the buff on or debuff on everyone that makes them take more damage, because that will also cause these to do more damage. Uh, they don't have any special abilities; they just smack. So that's all they do. Um, they are, I guess I should, I should, I should fall back to this well because I forgot to mention this. The boss on each side is immune to whatever, um, element he is. So on the first phase, he is immune to frost. Not that, you know, I don't think we're gonna have any frost mages that won't matter. And on this side, uh, he'll be immune to 
uh, nature, which is going to only really affect uh, Julia and uh, Beck, I think, is the only nature I could think about that would even matter for that. Um, so it's going to be kind of annoying because um, I, I think the only thing you can do is like flame shock and melee. I don't even know what else you have that's not nature. Um, but what he does as his special ability, it's uh, easier to deal with than the water tomb uh, on the other side. His special ability is uh, vile sludge, which targets someone, uh, and he'll 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 do this every let's say it's like every like six eight seconds or something like that. Uh, put a debuff on someone that makes them take a a, a nature dot. Uh, doesn't do a ton of damage. Um, the more annoying part of it is that it lasts a while. It lasts twenty four seconds, and it causes your healing and damage you do to be reduced by fifty percent. So that's part of the reason that even though on the the frost side. Uh, there's the tomb that can stun even multiple people. Why it's better to use our cooldowns on that side is because if people get hit with on, with on this side, they basically just do half damage. So it's it's super annoying um, for 24 seconds. So it's basically almost the whole phase if you get hit at the wrong time. Um, but yeah, that's 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 basically it. Because what will happen is you know I'll show here he'll pick up the ads. Um, they're going to pull them together. We'll try to mark one with skulls so that the, all the melee know to focus one or single targets know to focus one. Just cleave them down. Um, and then the reason what they're doing here is they're just focusing the boss and using seeds, but they have, you know, five warlocks and they have a couple of mages that can just AoE. We won't, we have a, a good number of casters. We don't have that many casters. So um, really just need to focus them down. Uh, we may change the strategy later. It's not a fight about damage. He's got a, a 10 minute in rage. Like, they still have 8 minutes left until he goes berserk and the boss is already at, like, 40%. We're never going to hit that, okay? So, don't worry about the damage on the boss, okay? Don't worry about the mechanics. Um, you can see it here, the mark, 100% uh, is coming in 5 seconds. And it said after that happens, that's when the transition begins because you have 15 seconds at that point to get on the other side before he does the next debuff. And you got to make sure that that's happening. The um, transition doesn't happen exactly at the flags. Uh, it happens pretty close. Now, a couple of tips that I would give is once the boss is, uh, let's say he's on the poison side. I'll go back. Well, I'm not going to go back really because you can visualize it. Once he's When he's on the poison side, for instance, there, what I would recommend is that as, as able... Uh, the healers and the range DPS start working their way towards the flag. Um, ranged, I wouldn't necessarily cross over. Healers, you probably can go ahead and whenever whenever possible, move past. Because what you want to be able to do is when the boss transitions, you don't want to be on the poison side. Because if the boss transitions and then you heal, because the, uh, the tank took a big hit right before it transitioned... Uh, then you might pull him back over the line. But if you're already positioned on the frost side when he's on poison, then you can kind of lead the tank when he's moving over, and then you don't have to worry, worry as much about pulling threat. Because, again, you could probably even take a, a, a hit from this boss when he is um, unbuffed before he puts his marks out. You don't want to, but it's better than pulling him back over the flag. Same thing with DPS, uh, just make sure that you're watching your aggro, but as he's getting ready to, to move and transition, you want to start working your way towards the flag, put yourself on the side, the Shadow Priest, perfect, he's already moved himself across, probably because he knows he's got his dots up and he wants to make sure that he's not going to pull threat, and if he does, then it's going to run away from the flags, not towards him. So, uh, what they do here, the boss is low, and this is something we'll probably do as well because we have a lot of Warlocks. Uh, if we transition, we know we're just, we're gonna kill in that phase, no problem. Um, we'll generally just CC them. So you can just banish them, you can fear them, uh, and you just burn the boss. When the boss dies, the ads die. So it's a very easy fight. Uh, the the you just make sure that you don't pull aggro. Make sure that you're um, positioned in a way that if you might pull aggro, that you're not gonna pull him across the flags and cause a wipe. Uh, that's it. The, the doing the fight's very easy. He doesn't hit super hard uh, unless you keep him on one side too long. The adds are easy. 
So, uh, any questions about any of that? Pretty, pretty straightforward, boss. Yeah, please don't get greedy, and it should be super easy. Do not get greedy. You will, you will single-handedly wipe the raid. Uh, like I said, the first time, if it happens like off cache at the beginning, that probably won't even wipe the raid because what's going to happen is we're just going to get one set of ads. But if if it happens, I still don't want you to do it. But if he ends up coming over, um, I actually saw them do a, a a a bad pull. One of their wipes was a bad pull at the start. It wasn't even a wipe. They like ran all the way to the entrance to reset it. It was a, like a pet went in and it came over and it spawned ads right away and they just wiped it instead of like doing it. It's not even a big deal. You just have one. You, you just have don't have a, your first phase without ads. It's it's still doable. But if it goes over to the frost side and then comes back after that, at the like at the end there, if it had transitioned back, um, not only do you then have eight ads, but the debuff that you had from before on Hydras, it's still there. So that means that he's going to keep applying further marks to you. So now you're not going to to you know 10 25 50 100 now it's 250 percent 500 percent and you're, you're just gonna wipe um the only way i guess not to is like you pull all the people in back and you have like 12 ads and then you just taunt shield wall aoe and pray i don't even know um so these uh platforms here let me go back just a little bit here kind of hate the angle that he views it it's a little easier to see here um uh, the next boss well they're they don't do it in order. They come back to this later. There's a boss down here that's lurker below. You can't really see it because of the camera angle. Um, there's the uh, five platforms up here. All the platforms are the same mobs uh, for the platforms. So there are the um, uh, two of the priests at the front here, Quailfang Priest, the Skull and the X. Uh, there are these uh, Shatterers on the... On the, in the back, in the middle, is a honor guard. And there's a bunch of these little, like, uh, uh, technicians around here. So the the priests, uh, they do, obviously, the heal. Um, but they also uh, do, like, a holy fire. It's not a big deal. Um, they also will do spirit redemption when they die, which is... It always feels like a priest died whenever you see that, because you're not... I'm not... I think this is the only mob that I could think of that does spirit redemption. Um, you kill them first just because of the heal. Um, what I would recommend, at least at the beginning, is, uh, just focusing, um, at least skull just to kill it, and then probably cleave AoE once that's done off of X. There's gonna be a bunch of these little guys coming in, and, uh, it's gonna be mostly on... Uh, Chetty to pick up the little guys. Oh, there's a, like five of them back there. He's also going to be responsible for picking up two of these ads. So uh, kill target will be um, Cash's target, and he's going to pick up a Shatter. Chetty will be picking up another Priest and another Shatter. And the last one, the Honor Guard, is actually going to be pulled away. Uh, it doesn't have to be pulled super far. Um, it did on the private server for you guys that remember us doing that just because of how his um, fear worked. It does. It's not as sensitive here, so you can keep them pretty close. So, again, um, if you just the little guys are not a big deal, uh, but if you AOE too early, then they get loose and it's a pain in the ass to to to, to get them. Uh, the shatters, uh, they really they just melee. They they use like a a armor reduction on the tanks. It, it's not a big deal. These packs are very easy, uh, as long as you don't go early with the AOE. Um, the honor guard, um, he does a, um, intimidating shout, which only happens if there is multiple targets in melee range. So it's okay to go in on him after all these ads are dead, but you don't want to go in on him early, uh, because then they'll just cause everyone to get feared. Um, plus he's not, it doesn't really, you don't really want to focus him first anyways. Um, he also does a, uh, a knockback and a, um mortal strike so um he can hit pretty hard it's not a it's not a big deal though these packs are very easy uh in order to do the boss well we'll get to it later but generally what we're gonna do is we're gonna kill all these platforms so that it makes the lurker easy um does anyone have any questions about these packs here all right go 
ahead and skip forward a little bit here. Okay. All right, so here to the right was where Lurker would be. That's the middle of all those platforms. Uh, to the left here, it goes two directions. So what we'll probably end up doing is just clearing the rest of those platforms and doing Lurker. They go a different route, which was fine. Um, this uh, ramp will split two ways. To the left, uh, when you go that way, uh, it'll have you encounter Leo first. Uh, if you go to the right, you'll get more Grim. It uh, doesn't matter which way you go, uh, in, in the middle of those is uh, Karathras. So these packs here, um, there are um, the big guys at the end here. These are the Serpent Guards. Uh, they do a, um, a cleave. So when we're, when we're tanking these, we need to make sure that these are not facing towards the melee. Uh, they also have a damage reduction aura, or sorry, an armor reduction aura. Not a big deal. Uh, you cannot CC these, so they have to be tanked. And um, they also have a spell reflect, which is which is nice. I think it's one of those instant cast spell reflects. Uh, these guys are saved for last. Don't worry about killing these right away. Uh, the other ones can be CC'd, um, but they don't have to be. The biggest danger are the, um, the nether mages. So there'll be mages in there. Um, they can be one of three different specs. So the fire, frost, arcane... And they do different like AOE or abilities based on that. They're the, probably the most dangerous mobs in here. So what we will generally do is we will sheep them. Uh, and then um, we will uh, deal with them last after the uh, um, the Serpent Guards. Um, if they do get broken and they've got dots on them or whatever else, these are the primary focus. So it doesn't matter what we're attacking have to kill these. They also blink, which is annoying, uh, and then they drop threats. So uh, those those are those have the potential to, to wipe the the raid. So those have to die first if if they're not CC'd. Um, there's also a uh, skulker in the packs. That's just basically a rogue. Uh, he does kick. It's not a big deal. Just he does a moderate amount of damage. So just make sure that you're healing through that. Uh, and then the last notable mob are the tide callers. They're shamans. Uh, they do a couple of things. Um, they do a, a, a chain lightning and AOE silence. Uh, they also have a um, poison shield that's on them that will trigger whenever they get hit. That does a lot of damage. So we need to make sure that when we're attacking these, that if that that uh, poison shield is up, it does get purged or dispelled. Uh, otherwise, the melee will take a ton of damage. Um, also drops a uh, totem for an elemental. It'd be a, a water elemental. You don't kill the elemental itself. You want to kill the totem. Totem will die quickly, uh, but the elemental's a pain in the ass. So uh, that's sort of the focus if that happens. So generally in these packs, what we'll do, we'll have um, the uh, two of the tanks, each tank a um, an honor guard, and then uh, we'll have someone going through and killing kill targets. So... Essentially, it would go probably Shaman, and then the Skulker, then these big guys, and then we'll clean the mages up at the end. I think uh, this pull, they kind of fuck up. Um, we'll watch through it, but I, I think they... I think it, from what I remember, it's like they break it with AoE on the sheeps. Yeah, you want to be really careful with multi-shot, chain lightning, things like that, because those mages are probably the hardest trash mob in here. We don't want to break the poly. Yeah, it looks like they're breaking the seeds. So you can see the elemental here. So the first thing you need to do, don't worry about the skull. Leave the skull alone. It's fine. Like, go kill these mages. These Like, if you see the raid took, took like a bunch of damage, um, and it looks like someone died even, if you leave those up, the raid will probably die, especially if you have two of them. Up 
they're doing is really dangerous. They're facing these mobs towards the raid and cleaving everyone. That's uh, it's a no-no. I don't even know why they bother to pull that because they don't end up ever coming that way. This guy, he patrols to this platform, but then it goes all the way, like, way down to the right. Uh, generally, you can just probably skip him unless uh, you're worried about him coming in during the, during the pull. But this one, I don't remember which one this is. Frenzy. He's the Frenzy buff, so that's the easy one. And at, at this point is when you should just be starting to run out as melee. Uh, it's the, oh, it's the mushrooms that spawn. Those are actually good. Those give you regen while you're needing health and mana. So if you need to drink or eat, just give a stand next to them and do that. Uh, this next one, I think, is uh, the, uh, the spray, the acid spray. Uh... And as, as you'll see, the raid doesn't move up, and they're definitely too close if they were going to try to range it. Um, but I, I think the damage is manageable even with it. I don't know that anyone even dies from it. Maybe someone does, but definitely not, not a raid wiper. Yeah, as you can see, it's a lot of damage. Um, definitely don't want to be taking it on purpose, but if it does happen... You don't want to just run around. Uh, basically, you want to start spamming your AoE heals to make sure everyone stays alive. Um, yeah, I think this is where he dies because he decides to attack, continue attacking through the death. He gets aggro and one of them dies. He just, when it's a couple percent left, just stop attacking, get out. We'll go for a little bit here. This group is going to be the same as the one uh, before that, um, Colossus. Uh, same makeup, so you'll have a couple of CCs. Um, you'll have one of the, um, the rogue-like guys and one of the shaman guys. Um, let's kill the shaman first, purchase shield. Again, they AoE breaking like you should be you shouldn't need to aoe here at all basically at the beginning just just single target there there's not really a reason to start just aoeing it all down but because those mages get in the raid some people die Next poll has a couple, of, or has a new, um, there's still the uh, the same guys that were before, the ones that cleave, um, but there's also now the uh, witches here, the fathom witches. These ones are annoying. They do a um, uh, an AoE knockback that does much damage and throws people, so we need to be careful of position. I think there, for you guys that played on VOA, there was a patrol that would go up and down this hallway. I think that's gone, because I in this video I never see that patrol. So what they do, and what we will probably do, as long as that patrol's not there, is we're going to pull them into the hallway, uh, because if you try to fight them here, people will get knocked back, specifically melee, uh, and probably just get thrown into the water. So what we'll do is pull them in. This is not an AoE situation. This is kill Skull and X as fast as you can, uh, because they can mind control anyone, uh, which includes tanks. And so... Uh, if you have a tank that gets mind control that's taking an ad, you might run free and kill people. 
So just focus skull X and then just do single target. Um, you cleave at the end when there's the last two, but uh, just, just focus both the witches there. Hardest part of that pack is the gap that people fall through on the end of the bridge. Yeah, if, uh, if you're looking at it from like not the like a forty five degree angle like he has it, but more like behind your character, you 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 might not even see it. There's um because it it kind of has a very acute angle on the uh, gap, and but you can if you just walk, you might fall through it. So just be mindful when going across there. Uh, this next hallway leads into Leo Theris's room. Um, same. Same batch of mobs in here with the um, the shamans and the mages. There is one new mob, uh, which are the uh, the lurkers. Uh, they look like the uh, elementals in the beginning of um, Underbog. Uh, those ones we are going to banish and kill last. Um, they what they do is they spawn a bunch of mushrooms and they those mushrooms quickly grow uh, not like the boss in underbug but they, they the similar mechanic start start spawning a bunch of mushrooms around them um and those do a ton of damage and if you try to kill them first uh you can probably kill them first just fine but then the mushrooms start building up and you're trying to deal with mushrooms and attacking ads oh yeah there's uh there's one other ad and it's going to be uh what are they called shield bearers i think I don't remember the name of them. They're like they're like prot warriors basically. Um, those guys, what they will do is they'll uh, they use like Avenger shield. I guess it's not prot warrior then, but they also will, will charge people. Not a big deal. Um, all of these are CCable by the way. You can you can sheep all of these. You can banish that guy. Um, again, they've got the major sheeped, but again, I think they do break that with AOE again. Oh, yeah, and they wipe here. That's right. Yeah, don't break the poly. Just don't. I mean, there's there's just not a reason. There's just not a reason to AoE here. I know it's a lot of mobs, but um, if we're going to AoE, it's going to be one of those things that we call for. It's not just something you should assume to just AoE. Let me see. Fast forward here. It's gonna probably be a second before they get back up. But yeah, generally what you would do here is you, you banish the elemental, you sheep the two mages, and you just you kill the rest of them. If you can pull them far enough away from the others, because there will be I think four of them, um, that's probably fine to AOE. But I still probably wouldn't. I would still just focus the targets because. These shamans also drop totems that will summon elementals. It's just, it's easier if you just kill them one at a time. It might technically be faster to AoE them, um, but it's not much faster, and it makes things way easier if you just focus them in a kill order. See, the totems die really quickly, so you should never attack the elemental itself, the uh, water elemental. Um, and away from these mushrooms, they start ticking pretty quickly after they spawn. Do you know if the elementals are banishable here? They are. All right. Just don't banish it if you banish the lurker. Yeah, but honestly, the totem dies so fast. I like if you're gonna cast, you may as well just cast a shadow bolt at the, <laughs> or incinerate or whatever at the uh, the totem instead. But anyways, they clear more of these packs. We'll kind of go through here. Um, 
there's not really a reason that I could think of that for those uh, minus the mages that you wouldn't necessarily care about being a melee range in the lurker because of the the um of the mushrooms. But we we see see those see see those at the beginning. Uh, so if you're worried about getting charged and getting hit by the uh, the shield bearers, you can be closer to the tanks and not get charged and be within the charge range. Just don't be close when the lurker is out. But the charge doesn't really kill anybody, and it retains threat when he charges, so it'll just charge someone and then come back. Um, they end up clearing the bottom rest of this room. We're not going to watch all the packs here because that's going to take a little while for them to do and get up to the boss. All right. Uh, so we have two. There we go. So with Leo, he starts with these three ads. Um, they will do um, a, a mind blast on targets um, that will, it's kind of like an, an AOE mind blast. Uh, it's nothing that we can't heal through, uh, but we, we don't need to AOE here. The fight does not begin, or I should say the boss doesn't begin, until all three of these are dead. There's no reason that we need to quickly kill these. So there's like there's no sense in AOE and cleaving is fine, but the boss will start once this last ad is dead. So it's take that chance to make sure we can even be moving back. Uh, we will be fighting down the area kind of where you see them fighting uh, when we pull the boss. Um, the but we can use that time to get in position, make sure people are healed and ready to go. You know, tanks have for full rage bars or whatever else. Um, kind of like a non not a big deal if, if you get low i mean just make sure that you're you're moving away from people and um if you're a healer just you know use some sort of fast heal or bubble just to make sure that person doesn't die it's not no one should die there um leo now he is a two phase or two phase repeating fight so the first one is, is just him himself leo theres um he will he does a moderate amount of damage. It's not a big deal, uh, when, like his regular damage, as long as he's hitting a tank. So um, he won't do that much damage to a tank themselves. But other people will, will take a, a lot of damage if they're hitting him like a caster or something like that. Um, when he's just human form, that's all he does um, while you're attacking him. Um, frequently, though, he will do Whirlwind. Um, when he does Whirlwind, it's a complete threat drop. Uh, and he doesn't retain any threat while he's whirlwinding. Uh, so, and he, when he whirlwinds, everyone around him will periodically take damage. And he also places a bleed. Uh, and he, he frequently changes targets. So, uh, unlike the private server, he changes targets a lot. He doesn't just stick on someone for like five seconds. So, um, you know, make sure you're taking a step back from him. Um, and... When he switches back to human form, remember, it's all threats gone. You have to stop DPS for a second. It, there's going to be small windows when he's human that you can DPS freely, especially as a melee. Um, but make sure that you let a tank pick it up, otherwise the boss will run over and just smack you. Now, while he's whirlwinding, you can, if you're a ranged DPS, as long as you're not getting hit, you can DPS as much as you want. Threat doesn't matter. Like I said, once he goes stops whirlwinding, his, reset, his aggro resets. Um, and that's what you need to watch out. Don't worry about dots, really, um, at that, uh, on this fight. Like, just make sure you're not, if you're watching the whirlwind timer, just make sure that you're not landing a, like, a, a big, you know, incinerate or, like, a, uh, arcane blast or whatever, right as it stops whirlwinding. That's gonna be a disaster. So, just watch when it's gonna end whirlwind, give it a second, make sure it's on a tank, and then go. Especially if uh, you're doing an Insuri or a Shadow Bolt that has travel time. If he's whirlwinding away from you and you cast it during whirlwind, it might not hit for four seconds still. And then you might die, so just be careful. Yeah, this is um, also, this is not a fight where, at least in the beginning, uh, that's really any sort of DPS race. This is another uh, control fight. You know, this is, uh, don't be silly with, you know... You, doing threat at the wrong times one would be at the end of the whirlwind uh, as we went over uh, second would be transitioning into the second phase 
uh, that happens. This is the demon form that happens. Uh, so he will uh, change over and his abilities will change. So um, instead of meleeing, what he's going to do is whoever his top threat target is, he's going to start casting um, these uh, cast bolts at them. Um, we'll have a dedicated tank for that. Um, right now, that's illogical. So, um, who is going to be wearing uh, fire resistance gear because it will throw a cast bolt that does fire damage uh, that itself doesn't do very much damage, but it applies a stacking uh, debuff on whoever it hits that causes them to take more and more and more damage. Uh, and uh, what is it? It's 150 damage that it does, but then it applies a debuff that increases it by 1,675 each time it hits you. So, you know, you'll be taking, you know, less than 2k uh, the second time, but then they'll keep adding an extra 1675 each time. Um, that's not mitigated. Well, that that's mitigated by resistance, but only one person's going to have fire resist. So, you definitely don't want to pull aggro. You definitely don't want to get hit more than a couple of times. Um, so, when he switches over, you need to wait a second. This is our time to, like, pump DPS into him, because he's not going to be whirlwinding, he's not going to be going anywhere, but you need to wait. You need to wait a second to get threat. And once there's a threat lead, you like once it's established that really you should be very hard to catch threat at that point from the warlock. Um, the boss at that point um, will just hit him. There's nothing you need to worry about. It doesn't do any damage around him. Just stay away from the marked target. Okay. Um, one other thing he will do in this phase, and it's about like 20 or 25 seconds in here, um, he's going to do... Um, the uh, inner demon phase. So these ads that get pulled up, there's going to be five of them. And you can tell who it's on. Uh, they have a um, a beam connecting that demon to you, and they're going to be hitting you. No one else can help you with the demon. Everyone has to kill their own demon if you get one. Um, they have, I think, about 11,000 health or something like that. They don't hit that hard. Um, they do hit hard enough where, you know, you if, if you just get hit the whole time, you're going to die. Uh, and they also cast Shadow Bolts. Um, if you fail to kill your demon before the, uh, the timer on you fades, and um, I think that is, I want to say like 20 seconds or so. Maybe it's 25. Yeah, that's about 25 seconds. Um, then you get permanently mind-controlled. Um, and that we, we, you know, can't have that happening to anybody in the raid because that just adds another component. If it's the wrong person, uh, if it's a tank, uh, it's really bad. It won't ever target the warlock that's, that's, um, has the highest threat or whoever has the highest threat. So that's another thing is it's important that you don't pass the, the warlock. Um, whoever gets these demons, you're not doing anything except killing the demon that's on you until it's dead. Um, so key point on where that's important is for healers. Healers, if this is on you, you're only killing the ad. You're not even healing yourself. Other healers need to be, pay attention to who's getting these targets, who's getting these marks. Um, it should, DBM should automatically call it out. Um, and making sure that you are healing them. It doesn't matter if someone is capable of healing themselves. They need to be able to kill their ads. And if so, um, as a bonus, uh, I didn't read anything else other than that say this is not the case, and this is how it was as far as it was as far as I can remember. Uh, they take extra damage from certain types of elements and less damage from others. So uh, they take less damage from shadow and I believe fire. So it kind of screws warlocks a little bit, uh, but warlocks should still have no issue killing them uh, because you're a pure DPS class. Uh, but they actually take increased damage from arcane nature and holy spells. So if you're a healing priest, uh, you shouldn't be trying to use, you know, shadow spells to kill them with. You should just be spamming smite and you'll kill it quickly. You'll be fine. Um, as far as like hunters go, I tried to find a, an answer to this or a video and I couldn't. If someone knows, um, you can let me know, but um, I don't... This used to be a bug, and they may have put it in. I don't know if it was a bug, but it, it happened. Um, if your pet killed the demon, it didn't count as you killing it. So that meant that you, even though you would kill the demon, or your pet would, you would still get mind-controlled. 
Um, now, I would say to be safe, if the demon is like basically dead, I would probably just take your pet off or put it back on Leo, and then you just finish the, the, the demon. Um, I said, I don't know if it's the case, but I would say at least the first week or so, I would just be safe with that. Um, they can uh, be CC'd, so um, you know, they can be slowed. Um, you can stun them, you can, uh, you can use uh, freezing traps. So something that might be worth doing is, as you know we're going into that phase, just drop a freezing trap. That way if you get an add, it'll just instantly get frozen, gives you a second to get a little bit of room, and then you can like, you know, set up your combo, stun with your pet or whatever. Uh, should be pretty easy. Um, I think the only one that really is gonna have a difficulty with it is probably myself, uh, because I won't have a ton of damage output. Uh, so, um, I, I may put myself in a DPS group for this fight just to make sure that I can kill my demon if it happens. Um, but the, the biggest thing, and usually where the issue is, is not people getting mind controlled. It's, it's healers getting mind controlled that have an assignment to heal the warlock and people aren't healing the warlock or they're not healing the healers that are get, that are getting hit by the, uh, um, the demons. So, all healers need to be on the ball specifically in this phase knowing what the assignments are and knowing who's mind controlled or who not mind controlled who, who's getting an inner demon on them uh, does anyone have any questions about that so far okay so i i don't think anyone gets mind controlled here um i wish you could see him attacking one of the ads i i think it's only like 10 or 11k hit points it's 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 not unreasonable to do it, but I think it's like you have to do something like 400 DPS to them. Um, again, not 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 a big deal for most people, but if you're not paying attention, or if you don't notice for you know five, six, seven seconds that you're actually getting hit, it can be a big deal. I would say probably um, uh, the one class that doesn't necessarily have to focus on it, maybe rogues. So in this case, Vec. As long as you're you know putting the demon in front of you, you could probably just use that chance to like blade flurry and just kill. It'll probably die with just that. Easy. Yeah, pure pure DPS classes shouldn't have really any issue. They they'll die quickly, but just makes sure you are killing it. Um, again, it'll switch back to Leo. It just it just rinses and repeats between those two phases. This repeats until um, he gets to fifteen percent. So um, at fifteen percent, what will happen is he'll do a short RP where he kneels down. Uh, you won't be able to attack him during that, and um, it will be both of them at once. So you're gonna get both Leo uh, and uh, the uh, the demon at the same time. The demon's gonna be at full health, so we don't target the demon. Uh, Leo will himself will continue to be at 15 and, uh, until you kill him, 15 to zero. Um, but you'll still need to make sure that you're watching the whirlwind, you're not moving to where the um, the warlock is, you know, that's going to be marked because you're going to get hit with those chaos bolts. Uh, that you are giving the tanks a second to pick up the threat. It it can get, it can be like a lot going. I feel like a lot is going on at that moment, but it is not a not too big of a deal. It's really just it's really just the the Leo phase plus uh, just the demon hitting the warlock. That that's that's the only difference is that the demon hits the warlock. Uh, there's no inner demons on that phase, that la that final phase, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, it's just making sure that you're uh, not dying, and 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 healers are are watching, you know, both tanks and anyone getting hit by the dots. I say uh, generally that's the phase that you. Um, a may hero. I don't know that we would necessarily need to. Uh, you can either hero then or you can hero during one of the demon phases. Um, either way is fine. Uh, the last phase should even last 45 seconds. So should be pretty quick once you get him to 15.
Yeah, at that point he only has like 630k or something like that. So priests, you can if other healers get the demons, that's good to bubble them so they can cast better. Don't don't bubble verse though. Let him get his rage. Can also earth shield the uh, the other healers as well to remove yeah. spell interruption. Yeah, because pushback's a big deal for caster, especially healers on that. So bubble and earth shield is great. Yeah. That's the fight. It's uh not bad. It's the last phase, the the it's sort of a I mean there is a hardened rage in this fight. I don't know that you would ever hit the hardened rage. I think if you're hitting I don't know how you would stay alive long enough to hit the hardened rage. Um but the softened rage essentially is um if your warlock isn't really resisting in the final phase, uh he's gonna start taking more and more damage from the stacks until he eventually just gets one shot. At that point the boss will just start cast bolting whoever's highest in the raid, which is likely going to be healers. Um, and then uh, eventually the raid will just die because healers die and then you can't heal the whirlwinds and bleeds. and um, So a little bit of bad luck with resists in the last phase, uh, that enrage can be pretty short. And one note while you mentioned that for healing the demon phase is uh, I'll be taking chunk damage or no damage. So uh, it's like I'll either take big damage and I'll need to heal me to full in a couple seconds or I'll resist it and take none. There's not much gray area, so don't get lulled to sleep. Be ready with big heals in the pipeline. All right, let me clear a few more of these packs, uh, which just have the same mobs as before. So nothing new to go over with these. Or we just uh, here they kill the caster first. That's I guess that's fine, but um, this is gonna take us down into the hallway towards Carithris. Skip forward a little bit because they clear like three of those packs. Carithris has a bunch of these um, uh, these under under bog colossus. It's the same ones as before. Um, you have a little bit less space to maneuver with, especially at the beginning until you can actually get in the room. Um, and the hallway kind of curves a little bit, so it makes it really annoying. But it's just the same thing as dealing with these the same way. Um, you know, if it's uh, if it's acid, make sure you're getting close and moving through if you get the, the uh, spray on you. If it's earthquake, just make sure you're far away. Frenzy, just kill him quickly. Move out early before he dies so you don't get hit with the... Uh, um, the poison uh, on the floor. So go ahead and move before a little bit here. We don't need to see like them kill all of these. Actually, with this, with this, I actually need to. One second here. Yeah, I don't like his point of view on this one because he does um, one of the ads that get pulled away, and you can't see like any of the fight. Go ahead and change my screen here. All right, can you guys see the new screen here? Yep. Okay, so this is Fathom Lord Carathris. Well, I'm not actually looking at Fathom Lord, but it's actually the same guy, but it's a different knight. Um, here he doesn't he doesn't go on the ad that they get pulled away so it's it's the so the boss has it's kind of a council fight a little bit um the boss himself fathom lord um he it, it is not killed first and generally you shouldn't be able to kill him first just because of the buffs that he gets um i'll kind of go over some of the abilities that each one of them do uh, and kind of explain how the fight works so fathom lord himself uh he retains uh, these abilities for the whole fight is uh, he'll do um, one that's a catac cataclysmic bolt. Uh, so what this does is it targets a random person uh, then and does 50% of their maximum HP. So uh, if you're at or below 50%, you'll just die. Um, it will only target people with mana. So anyone with mana can get targeted. Um, I don't think it targets druids in feral form. 
I think it's only if you have mana currently. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think it targets like feral druids. So, uh, but anyone else is free game. So if you are ever in this fight a mana user, and you have less than half hit points, you need to find a way to get up quickly. Just because if you get targeted, you'll just die. Um, he also does a um, a nova around him that he does occasionally uh, that will hit all melee for a few thousand damage. Uh, and then as the fight goes on, whenever any of the other bosses, like the mini bosses, die here. Uh, he will inherit one of their abilities. So um, the first one that we kill is going to be uh, Tidal Vest, which is the Shaman here. That's the one that they're attacking. Um, he does a couple of things. His, he, the reason that you kill him first is because... He, you don't really have to. You could kill the other one first. But the reason you kill him first is because he's generally more of a, a direct threat to the tank. Um, he has higher burst damage um, on whoever he's attacking than the Hunter does. Um, his biggest thing that he does is he drops a Spitfire Totem. Uh, it's actually not super dangerous. Uh, I was looking at the damage that it was doing, and it's it does have to be prioritized. You do want to kill Spitfire Totem when it pops up. Um, it doesn't have a lot of health. I think it's like 23, 24,000 hit points. But just switch to it. You have to kill it, okay, um, whenever it spawns. Um, he'll drop other totems too. You don't need to kill these totems. It is a poison cleansing totem. Uh, that's going to be annoying for literally Vec. Uh, I think I don't think hunters use poisons, right? So maybe you guys do. I don't think you do though. Uh, but the that'll be this. You don't have to worry about. Don't worry about targeting that. If you kill it, he's just going to drop it eventually, anyways. Just stay in the boss. The only thing you're going to switch to is the Spitfire. Um, you can cleave here with these ads. The reason the boss doesn't get brought in, uh, we'll kind of go over that in a little bit. I just want to kind of go over these other ads first. So um, when he dies, the ability he inherits from this guy is Spitfire. So the, yeah, 20, 25k on that. So um, hit points. So when the uh, Shaman dies, you'll still need to be killing Spitfires uh, if they spawn. The boss will be close enough that the melee can go over and hit it. Uh, but it, you know, mostly it's going to be the range, making sure that you're switching quickly to it because the melee are actually going to have to go like walk over to it. Um, the next target that you kill is the um, Sharkus. He's a, a you know a, a beast tamer. Okay, he can spawn one of two ads. Um, one will be the spore bats here. Uh, this spore bat will. Um, you know, enrage, and he actually knocks back uh, and um, does some damage uh, to the, the tank. Uh, it also causes the tank to, to lose threat on it. Um, the other add is a elemental that he'll spawn uh, that explodes when it dies. Um, they're, they're not too bad. They just have to make sure that these aren't getting into the raid. Uh, the last one that's getting pulled away, and you can kind of see up on the map here, everyone's right here. This one gets pulled way into the corner. Uh, that is uh, Gribdis. That is the healer. So actually, I'll, at the end of this, I'll actually show you his point of view on that one because, um, well, I think, I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't think the DPS, I think he goes straight to the boss after this, which is a little bit of a mistake. Uh, so I'll pull up the other video here so you can see Gribdis. Gribdis, um, oh, oh, and the ability that he inherits from... Um, the uh, circus or whatever is the the beast within which causes him to do more damage uh that does i believe affect the cataclysmic bolt so that that thing once he's dead that thing that causes you to take um 50 of your max hit points it's actually going to be more than that um so it's even more important once the hunter's dead that you don't drop low on hit points if you're a mana user um I'll go back to it after this. Let me, I'll go, let me go to the end of the fight here. So what they do here, and which which had the potential to wipe them, is uh, the raid leader calls for all of the melee to, instead of killing this ad, to switch to the boss. Now, the reason why that's an issue is um, when the boss, if the boss gets to 75% health, if any of the ads are alive, uh, he gets an extra 66% attack speed 
um, while for for the rest of the fight. Doesn't matter if you kill the ad anymore, but each extra ad is an extra sixty six percent attack speed. Um, so with his enrage and everything going, and the other damage output that he does, uh, it's considerable. And then that also affects the cataclysmic bolt. So you can see there that I think that person was literally full health. Maybe not. They're very close though. It, it's uh. Anyways, I don't know if they, I don't remember if they got killed or not. No, I guess not. But they, they, they certainly would have died even I, with the enrage there. Um. The ability that the uh, well, let me go over this 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 ad first here. The reason that we keep that one away is for a couple of reasons. One, these tornadoes that she does are super annoying. It's a tornado that goes around the room. Uh, it locks you up in the air and does damage. It just it disrupts the fight. Um, she also does uh, a, a tidal surge around her uh, that will stun anybody and do damage to them. Uh, so you can't really stack it up with the other adds and cleave. Uh, and then she also does a heal. Now the heal will hit regardless. That That's something that you're going to have to take care of. Um, there'll be multiple interrupters that are assigned to the healer. Uh, because her heal, I believe, is, is does like 130,000 health for a heal. So if that goes off, it's really bad. It's also really fast. It's like, it's like it's, The cast time is 0.85 seconds. Uh, now, I, I think she is susceptible to um, uh, cast slowing mechanics, so like Mind Numbing Poison or Curse of Tongues. Uh, so it's important that that stays up on her so that it's easier to kick. Um, the damage on her is not so important as much as just getting the kick off, getting the interrupt off. Um, what we'll probably do is uh, have at least one melee on the boss, or that ad, when it's pulled off to the side, uh, as well as a ranged interrupt, so probably like Julia, since she has a short interrupt, or um, a uh, a shaman that ha is capable of getting spell hit and healing gear, which that seems like kind of ass, so it'd probably just be Julia. That's going to be over there um, whenever she's in the raid. But if not, uh, then it will have to be multiple other interrupts. So... It gets a little more tricky otherwise because uh, she can cast it every 15 seconds. So if you try to put a mage over there, the mage can't interrupt every 15 seconds, right? So, and if the melee get frozen and the mage is on a cooldown, then that heal's going off. So just something we need to consider whenever we're over there. It'll probably always be at least a shaman healer, even if not spell hit cap, just so that's another interrupt. Um, the ability that he gains once she dies is the um, AoE uh, stun that goes around him. Uh, so at the end, he'll have the Enrage, he'll have the um, the totem that you need to kill, as well as the freeze around him, plus his other AoE Nova that he does that does damage, and the Cataclysmic Bolt. Um, so you'll have all of that at the end when it's just him. But uh, it's really not that big a deal. So just make sure when it is just the boss left, there's only a couple things you need to do. Just make sure that you are still killing the totem when it pops out and that, you know, make sure people don't go low. No one in ranged at this point of the fight, uh, yeah, that person just died instantly from that, uh, should be taking damage uh, unless one of two things. Spitfire totem stays up too long or you get hit by a cataclysmic bolt. The rest of his damage is melee range. So um, should be pretty simple. Um, do want to take a look at the fight from the other point of view here, so you can see what it looks like. Let me switch. Let me switch back to this screen here. Yeah, so on this side, you can see they have, um, I don't know why they have a warlock over here. That doesn't make any sense to me. He put up tongues and he didn't want to leave. Oh, I guess. Um, yeah, you can see here if there was a heal that needed to be kicked, there's no one to interrupt that. 
um, unless there's a, sh a shaman healer nearby. So that's kind of dangerous. So that's what these people do over the whole time. They kind of just ignore the rest of the fight. They just DPS over here and um, <laughs> died. Uh, and then um, uh, once once the other two ads are done or dead, then this ad will get brought over. So there should be periodic tornadoes that you'll see as well. Just, just make sure that, that if you're tanking this, that you're moving away from the tornadoes. Um, and that's it. Pretty pretty simple fight. Um, but like I said, does it does make sense to have at least one ranged interrupt in case a heal happens at the wrong time. So um, that's basically the fight. It's, it's, it's a lot of abilities, but it's most of them are, are fairly minor. Uh, it's just trying to make sure that you're not getting overwhelmed by all of it happening at the same time. And does anyone have any questions about you know, positioning, the abilities, the boss, anything at all with this one? Pretty straightforward. Uh, once, uh, it, it's, it's like any other council fight, whenever you kill the first ad, uh, it tends to get easier, so um, this one works just a similar way. Just make sure that you're not pushing the boss early. So uh, it's fine to to multi dot the boss if you want to. Just dots themselves aren't going to bring him to seventy five percent, but we're not going to like target him or cleave him directly um, until we're we're ready to do him last. So we'll go ahead and close this here. Oh, actually, I'm staying on this one for a little bit. Going to uh, next hallway here. Um, there's just some more of the previous ads in this hallway. Um, the witches that mind control uh, with the serpent guards. Uh, these shatterers, which were part of the packs after Hydros, are now included. Um, so there's be a couple of these packs up until Morgrim's room, and then uh, there will be a bunch of roaming uh, Murloc packs that we'll have to kill. So there's a few different Murlocs that are in the, these these groups. Don't have to worry too much about them. Um, I'd say like there's only I, I'm not gonna list all their abilities. The the ones you gotta worry most about are are two of them. One of the warriors. Um, the warriors get big. They enrage. They cleave. They drop threat. They're annoying as hell. So those are always gonna die first. So we're gonna get the warriors, uh, and those are gonna be a focus target, and those are gonna be killed. The other ones are the uh, depth seers. Those guys are annoying. They're the healers of the group, and they actually do a tranquility that can't be interrupted. Uh, that actually heals a significant amount. Uh, so we want to kill the warriors first just to get them done. Uh, and then, essentially, we will be uh, A-weighing the rest, and single target will be focusing on the healers. But pretty much all the adds that we need to kill are going to be brought back here. Um, we do not need to get the patrols at the other side. Um, there are murlocs that spawn during the boss uh, that do not aggro those patrols and pulling the boss also does not aggro the patrols from what I've seen I've watched a few videos and it doesn't appear that they're social with the boss in any way So we don't have to try to sneak by to kill extra patrols Okay, we'll go forward a little bit here because it's just more of these packs more of the same thing I'm gonna stop here for just a second, just so you can kind of see a little bit better the room, because he his view his viewpoints are oftentimes hard to see what's going on. So, like I said, more warlock packs you can see going in the room. They just have different patrols, so we just have to eventually pull them. Uh, the boss himself. So the middle of the room is not where we're gonna be tanking him. We're gonna be pulling him in a similar position as this video, which is up this ramp and off to the side here, is where we're gonna be tanking him right about this area here. Um, the boss will be faced away from the raid because he has a frontal, uh, uh, like, wave ability that he does that does damage to anyone in front of them and also slows their attack speed by um, 400%. So um, auto attacks will be very slow. It'll be a lot of, like, um, special abilities. So it's, 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 one, it's damage, but two, it's also a threat inhibitor. So it causes there to be less threat because there's just less auto attack damage that's happening. So be mindful of that. 
Um, luckily, basically all of the, the we have a lot of misdirects. We, have, we usually have at least uh, three hundreds, if not all four. So um, that should make it a lot easier to to keep threat on on him, regardless of that. Um, so the I'm gonna do one more pack before this. Let me try to find out where he actually pulls this. Okay, there we go. Now he he hits for a fairly decent amount. Um, probably I think if I remember right, what one of like the harder hitting bosses in here. Uh, he will he will chunk a little bit on the the, the main tank. Um, he has a couple of abilities. The first one is this watery grave ability that's coming up. Um, when this happens, four people, the raid warning will name out who it is. They get poured into the middle where he was standing. They'll get put into like these water bubbles, uh, and then uh, they'll get take a bunch of damage. Uh, let me see if it'll show approximately what you kind of expect to see in those people here once it actually goes off. There you go, you can see these people here. Uh, probably about like five, six K damage. They get thrown in the air and then they'll also take falling damage. That should never really kill anybody by itself. Um, you can also kind of, if you're assigned to heal those people, you can start like pre-healing them a little bit, maybe getting some hots on them or, or whatever. Gotta be careful though, because um, let's say it's, you know, uh, beware or whatever, who's saying to heal. If you start hotting all of these people up prior to then, and then you're getting ready to heal, it better be quick because what's going to happen is you can see after that timer, just be at the same timing. The, the, the next ability that happens, this says Murloc, but uh, what happens is the boss is going to earthquake. And when earthquake happens, everyone's going to be hit for a significant amount of damage. So these people that were in the globes, if they didn't get healed, at least some, they're probably dead. Most people, maybe not people with higher amounts of uh, health, like tanks or whatever, but like general DPS may be dead if you, they didn't get any heals. Um, at this point, this is very important. What happens at this moment is not just the earthquake that does damage to everybody. It's also uh, going to spawn murlocs. They're going to come from the entrance where you just came in, and they come from the opposite side of the room. Um if you start healing everybody, if you start, you know, throwing out a bunch of hots, if you start using, you know, circle of healing, uh, you know, prayer of healing or whatever, chain heal, um, you're going to get too much threat from the ads coming in and you're going to die. So um, what they do and what I kind of like, because I, the, I think the Murlocs here are faster than I'm used to. Um, I think I told uh, Cash that he'd be taking half of the ads in general. What I want, Cash, is you're going to try to pick up what you can. Like, you'll you'll run a little bit early for Earthquake. Uh, you'll pick up what you can. Uh, you might only be able to pick up a couple of them, though, because they come in pretty quick. Um, and then uh, what I'm going to have Chetty do, he's not here, I'll have to let him know this, is I'm actually going to have him just spam heal himself on, to get threat until they get in. That way all the Murlocs should go right towards him, uh, drop Consecrate, and then, oops, what happened? Why wouldn't you just have him spam uh, a greater blessing instead of heal? Because uh, he needs to heal. Because heals need to go out. He can also he needs, uh, spam he on to... warlocks if we take extra healing. Is, is that, he's topped off. It's it's not it's not that okay. It's not that he needs a ton of threat. That's not the issue. He just needs to have top threat. Does that make sense? So he'll just heal himself, get himself to full. That should make sure all the Murlocs are going to attack him. That's all that matters. Because once they're, once they're in on him, he just drops a Consecrate, basically, uh, and then uh, just stays alive. And then you'd be able to AoE, able to heal him, no problem.
But um, another reason that you don't, that he can't just do um, the blessings or whatever is because, why does he keep doing that? This one, Jesus. Question Would you <clears throat> want me to time it if that Murwaki is accurate so that when it blooms, it's his threat? Or too risky? What do you mean, Bloom is his threat? Bloom is, Bloom is your healing. Yeah, but I think, I, think Palm, think I, I think Palm only Earth Shield give the tank threat, right? Prayer Mending and Earth Shield are the only ones that give tank threat. I don't know what you mean by... by... I don't know. He's saying when the life bloom expires, which druids normally don't do. I didn't think it gave threat, but maybe. I believe it counts as your heal. It definitely doesn't count as the tank's threat. The biggest thing there is like the earlier control fights. As long as no one else is doing what they're not supposed to. Like first said, his threat should be fine. Yeah. Only thing is, if he gets topped off for some reason, he just has to switch and heal someone that's not topped off. Now the, he shouldn't be topped off. Uh, the only person that should be getting heals uh, at that point is me. I will still need to be healed because the boss is still going to beat on me. Um, so it's important that you still heal, at least heal me. Um where you want this... everyone doing it to split threat, not just one or two healers spamming. Yeah, where this can go a little bit sideways is, like I said, the the timers are not necessarily exact. It's more of like a cooldown, and so it can happen briefly after that. Um, as far as like the Murlocs, and I think the Murloc timer is more accurate than the um, the Globe one, and they're they're not on the same amount of timer either. Uh, so if possible, that when the Murlocs are happening that people actually get, um, like, it's going to happen here. There's still Murlocs up, and people get sent to the um, to the watery graves. That can happen, and that can be Chetty, right? If that happens, um, the first thing that need to happen is I need uh, uh, cash to AoE taunt. That you're saving your ta AoE taunt specifically for that. Um, in the event that both Chetty and Cash get sent teleported... Uh, I actually need uh, flexed to shield wall taunt. Because if you just AoE taunt, you're going to die. Those things hit too hard, you're going to die. So repeat, if, if you get sent by a watery grave, I'm just going to AoE taunt? Yes, uh, but only if there's Murlocs. Yeah, only if there's Murlocs. Yeah. Um then that, that that basically just rinses and repeats. Um, what's going to happen here is at 25%. Um, I don't... There's, there's a point in this hallway. If you pull him too far, he resets. I don't know exactly where that point is, so we're probably not going to be pulling him here. Where we're going to pull him is in over in the corner of the room. Um, at 25%, a couple of things happen. So uh, he will no longer do the watery graves where he teleports everyone into the middle of the room. Uh, instead, what he's going to do is he's going to start summoning a bunch of, like, these globes that look like the watery grave globes, uh, but they actually move. They, like, um, fixate on someone, and they move towards them. If it uh, if it hits you, uh, it's going to explode and do a bunch of damage to everyone. Um, so to combat that, what you do is move further away, and they actually expire after a certain amount of distance. So when you're they're in the doorway here like this... It doesn't actually get to him. Being in the corner should function the same way. So essentially, as long as the raid moves, you shouldn't have an issue. Um, there might be a time where you hold DPS, because if you push 25% at the wrong time, there may be people dying. If you do it, like, if you push 25%, like, right after people get uh, watery graved, well, then the globes can spawn right on top of them, and they're, they might die. So if there is, if it's, you know, 26, 27%, 28%, and there's water grace coming soon, we might just hold DPS for a moment. Um, he will still do the 
um, the uh, Murlocs, though. So that will happen through the rest of the fight. This is when we use our cooldowns to push this, uh, this last 25%. Um, still need to make sure that we're controlling the Murlocs. Again, they're going to spawn in the same spots. They're going to come in the doorway here. Again, do not heal up the whole raid. People don't need it. It's not a big deal. If you're not taking damage from anything else, you can wait until you know the Murlocs are under control before you heal anybody. Again, there, especially in this phase, when there's no uh, watery graves, there's nothing else to take damage from except for just the Murlocs and the boss doing his earthquake. And there's a long time before the next earthquake. There's no rush to heal everybody up. So particularly here, because the Murlocs are going to spawn. If you're here or even in the corner, you're going to be closer to at least this spawn. And then the other spawn on the farther side, it's going to be less time to react. But um, what we will do is um, we're going to have... Uh, Chetty pick up these ads um, and then Gorgo you'll, what, these first ads that come out I actually want you to try to pick up as many of those as you can because it's going to be closer to the door wait for the second group to come in you can't run to meet them because of the um, the globes they're spawning so just help tank off as, as many as you can um, focus priority on any of them get loose, loose those are yours to pick up and try to bring back into the pile so Again, it'll be hard to hold more than just a couple of them just because there's going to be AOE going out and everything. Um, but that's basically the whole fight. Was there any other questions about that? I know we had some questions before about the healing. Was there any other any other questions? Guess I'm going engineering. There you go. Yeah, the sappers are great there. Yeah, sappers are not, nice. not needed, but they're great. Definitely don't need it. So they're running all the way back. Um, I think here they tried to like skip Lurker. They thought he was optional, but you have to kill Lurker. So they're going to go through a period where they're going to clear the rest of the platforms and then do the boss. So let me go ahead and fast forward here. All right, so this is... Uh, let me see if I can get a better angle when they're first running up here, maybe. Okay, so Lurker, uh, he, he, there's a donut in the middle um, that he spawns from, and there's three platforms on the outside. So there's the one here where they're first jumping down, one over here, and there's another one on the far end with like a, another hole in it. So the boss, when it needs to be fished up, so it could take a little while. I think for them it took maybe like five minutes for them to actually fish it up. Um, which you just, you just fish in the middle of the pool here. Eventually, you'll get the boss, and he'll spawn. There'll be an animation. Uh, he doesn't move. He's like, a, you know, like kind of like rag or whatever. He just, he's, he's stuck in place there. Um, so just like, you know, other bosses that are stuck in place like that, uh, if you are not in melee range, you do not have to worry about threat. There is no threat table for him. So you can pass the tank to your heart's content. That's totally fine. Um... Just as long as you are not ahead of the tank and then in the middle somehow, he'll just smack you. Because <laughs> he, he still will turn to hit you if you're highest threat. Um, the, the boss has two phases. First is the, the phase where it's just him, and there's an add phase. So you'll see these dead fish in the water. Um, there's two ways to do the boss. The first way is generally considered the easier way. Uh, those platforms with all the ads um, where the old technicians were um, after Hydras, if you clear all the platforms, the water boils and the fish die. Um, while the water is not boiling, anytime, not just during the boss, but anytime you end up in the water, a bunch of these fish will attack you um, and do a bunch of damage to you. So uh, some people may choose to skip the platforms to do the boss. Um, but basically you got to clear all the platforms anyways to get to Vosh, so it just makes sense. Unless you're only doing Lurker and not worrying about clearing the dungeon um, to uh, to clear them all. Because uh, you don't spend a ton of time in the water this fight. You do go into the water a little bit, but it's not that bad. Uh, but when the um, when the trade-off now, is instead of the, the fish hitting you, um, when you're in the water, you'll take... Uh, periodic damage that ticks for 1,000 damage. So you can't just stay in the water forever. 
uh, but you will have to spend some time in the water. Most people, anyways. Um, some classes won't. Um, but uh, when the boss gets fished up, um, I'm probably not going to take him exactly where he's facing. I usually stand over in this area. That's not a big deal, but that's just for people to know. I probably was standing closer to this side here. Um, the boss uh, only has a couple abilities himself. So the uh, first thing that he'll do is like he'll he'll spin. Um, he'll just like pop up a little bit, do a little spin whirlwind. Uh, they'll hit anybody in melee range and knock you back. Um, ideally, you want to make sure that you're kind of close on the for when you're for if you're melee, you, you don't you want to be closer to him, but not in the water. Because if you're if you're like max melee range, you might get thrown and then get thrown all the way back in the water, and you got to try to jump back up and then get to him. So try to stay a little bit closer if you can. Uh, the he also does a a water bolt that will hit someone. Uh, it will hit. Um, Oh, no, sorry, I think I was the wrong thing. The geyser, I'm thinking of. Geyser uh, will take a random person uh, and then do damage to everyone around them and knock them back. It is possible to get hit geyser and then whirlwind. Um, it's So that's uh, a bunch of damage to be mindful of for the melee, specifically. But that can attack anybody and um, knock back anybody. So, um, But melee, you still want to be primarily behind him because what will happen is... Uh, and this is timed. He'll do spout. Uh, there, there should be a DBM timer, but there will also be a, a, a um, an emote that comes out that says he's taking like a deep breath. Uh, that we'll see. Let me go fast forward when I actually get the boss up. Uh, there you go. Yeah, he'll actually be um, shooting you know water out of his mouth towards the tank. Or actually towards whoever he has threat on, which should be the tank. Um, and then he will either go clockwise or counterclockwise. It's random. Uh, but he goes the whole way around and then some. It's like it's like a full circle and then like another like 90 degrees. So it's like a 450 that he does basically. So be mindful of that. Um, and you can see there that if you're not close enough. And those guys actually did get hit by both. They got hit by the splash or the whirlwind and the water uh, or the geyser. So it doesn't, well, shouldn't kill you, uh, but it, if you're not healthy when that happens, it can kill you. So there's the spout. It takes a deep breath. Um, it does move faster, I believe, than on the private server, so be mindful of that. Uh, but if anybody gets hit by that, it just does it straight in front of them. If anybody gets hit by that, uh, it knocks you way far away. It, like, throws you, like, 100 yards away or, or something like that. It's, it's far. You get, you get thrown really far. I mean, someone got hit by it. They're, they're off the map here, wherever they are. Um, it does um, a lot of damage to you. And then also, because you're far away, uh, unless you have some way of healing yourself or water walking or whatever, uh, then you're going to be taking that boiling damage in the in the water too. So, um, And also, you're going to be out of position. So just uh, the way to avoid that, one, if you're melee, Quickly identify which direction he's going. You can you can keep mailing as long as you're running that direction and you react quickly. If you're too slow to react, um, or you have like a little lag spike or whatever, um, and what everyone all the basically all the range want to do is you will uh, you're gonna jump in the water instead. If you're in the water, the spray will just go right over your head. So um, you only need to be in a few seconds, but don't push it. The um, the knockback doesn't perfectly align with like the graphic. So if you're trying to, you know, wait until the very last millisecond to jump in, you might just get hit and sprayed across the room and die. So, you know, where it's at right now, um, if it were if we're the first spin around, let's say, and it was gonna keep continuing, this druid should already be in the water. That's already too close for him to because he's he's gonna get hit. So um during this he won't melee or do anything. Uh, but he will continue to melee after. I believe after the spout is over, he always leads off with a whirl. Yeah, so immediately after that's done, he'll whirl and start to attack. Um, the boss, uh, I believe, is tauntable. Um, so melee if you do accidentally pull, or if I die, um, a tank can pick him up. Um, just have to be kind of quick with it so the melee don't start dying. Uh, he does have an anti-cheese mechanic that if nobody's within range... 
uh, he'll start just instant killing people. So, um, it is recoverable though. So, and that just repeats. So, do another spout. Happens to go the same direction. The melee just run around and stay behind him. That little puddle on the ground there, um, even though it's on the dock and even here too, that you will take damage while you're in that. So, you just jump over that. After the second spout, he'll do a whirl, and then that starts the second phase. So during this phase, boss is gone. You can't DPS him at all. I think dots don't even do damage uh, they, uh, while they're on him anymore. I think he's completely immune. Um, this phase there's, it is an add phase. So there's going to be three of these um, uh, melee naga that spawn. One where the melee is basically at. Uh, generally, this is going to be cash picking this one up. Melee, you have to give it a second. Because it like it spawns like right on the edge, uh, Cash needs to get it and turn it away from you because it cleaves and does a lot of damage in that cleave. So don't just go in right away because he needs to position it. So give him a second and then you can go in. Um, the kill order will be this one for this is for melee. You're gonna kill this one. You're gonna go over to this one, which I am gonna be tanking. That's gonna come in near where my my tank's uh, starting spot is. And then there's another one where Diamond's at. That's gonna usually be um, uh, Chetty's ad. That one will die last. Um, if for whatever reason we're behind on DPS, that's fine. We'll just kind of pull that over towards the, we'll walk it towards the boss, uh, backside of the boss there. And you know, you can just, you can just kill it while the boss is up. It's not a big deal. Um, but you do have to kill this one first just because that's near all the melee anyways. Uh, and then mine so that I can get back on the boss should I need to. Now the um, platforms here are gonna have, well, I can't really see it because there we go. Platform here are going to each have two of these um, Nagas that uh, will uh, do multi shots on the raid. Does a lot of damage. Um, this is going to be platforms are going to be assigned to a specific DPS. There's going to be a few DPS each platform. Uh, these are CCable. So uh, what will happen? He has views you can't really see here. Yeah, you can fear them, you can sheep them. Um, Generally, what you but if you if you fear or do whatever, they won't leave the platform. So if you fear, you don't have to worry about them like running in the water and going far away. They're gonna be stuck on this platform. Um, but there will be a, basically you'll be CCing one or both. If you use a fear, that's fine because fear doesn't necessarily break right away. Uh, but you'll have one assigned on each one of these to attack. So there'll be one on each that you'll be like, okay, kill this one first, and then the other one. Melee will be cleaning up the ads. If your ads die, you don't really want to be like running around. These two platforms uh, can sort of help each other if they have to. Um, you can see this platform, they've actually opted to just kill this one right away. They probably have both CC on this platform, uh, but they're like basically at max range. The last platform with the hole on the other side, you can't reach them. Um, what you would do here is after these ads are dead, if they're still killing these guardians, uh, you would just help the melee like, finish those off. Overall, this is a pretty easy phase. As long as the 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 biggest two biggest pieces of this phase, melee don't get carried away right away. Don't get cleaved. You could die, especially if you get cleaved and you get hit by a multi shot. Um, ranged, just make sure that you know who's CCing, what, and what your your kill target is when they come in, um, and that's basically it. So. Uh, it's a pretty easy phase. It's just about the, the control and uh, should line up. Yeah, here they got a couple of seconds before the boss comes back up. Boss is on a, doesn't come up when the ads die. He just comes up on a timer. So you may, ha you may have ads up. If you do, it's always priority finishing the ads first. Um, when he comes back up, first thing he always does is a deep breath instantly when he comes back up. So uh, what's important here is... Uh, that if someone has passed me a threat, it's fine. I do believe though that at the beginning, there's a chance that he may face whoever's highest threat to do the spout, even though he's not attacking you. So um, if if someone else is tanking, like Cash, if you're tanking, like I died or something, when he comes back up, the first thing you want to lead off with is a, is a taunt, just to make sure he's facing you. Okay. If he does spot a different direction, that's fine. Just make sure that you're like watching which way he's facing. Um, melee, you might have to jump in the water for that one. 
Uh, the water, like, honestly, like, if you don't want to run around as melee, you don't have to. Like, here, look, that spout's going towards the melee. I don't know what happened there. Uh, someone passed him threat, maybe, or... But that's right towards the melee. Um, you don't have to run around like this. You can. Uh, that's not a big issue, uh, as long as you're not getting hit. But you really, you could just jump in the water for a few seconds and then get back out. It's totally fine. Um, if you want to just focus on, like, your rotation or whatever instead. There, I don't think either way is necessarily wrong. But yeah, that just repeats again until the next submerge, and then it's add phase, then the boss, then add phase, then the boss. Um, probably like second or third easiest boss in here, to be honest. Um, any questions about the ads or the boss or anything? I don't have any questions, but I have a comment. Um, so you'll see in the video, like uh, if you're a healer, there's like torches in the middle ring. If you're healing in the middle ring, you can actually position yourself in front of the torch. So if you get hit with the bolt, it won't knock you back. You'll just be knocked into the torch. Um, just something minor if you want to be working on your positioning. <clears throat> yeah, something to consider too. I believe the torch is also LOS, so you have to be mindful of that. It's not normally a big thing. I do think with the circle platform, um, that can can cause an issue. So there's like a torch like right in front of that platform, um, but there could there could be instances if you're healing that that could cause a problem. And in the beginning, while we're fishing him up, uh, no one should be close to the middle where the boss spawns. He uh, does still one shot people when he spawns before he goes to the tank. If you're too close, so just stand back a step. Yeah, you only attack first, then go in. Yeah, if you're if you're not fishing, you shouldn't be anywhere near the middle. Like you'd, you'd be on the middle platform, but like melee, you should be on like the outside of the ring. Um, what we will have is at the beginning, we'll just have like all of the tanks, like within melee range to the front, um, you know, just to make sure that higher chance of one of us getting hit. Um, and then um, the if you're fishing, you kind of like max range. Also important to make sure you don't leave your fishing pole on during the fight, um, especially if you're you're a melee that's fishing. But um, once he comes up, just take a step back. Like as soon as he comes up. Yeah, you can fish out of his melee range. Sometimes you'll get it didn't land in fishable water, but you can safely fish from there. All right, and then that will bring us to Vash, and um, so this was really annoying too. Instead of actually testing and doing things properly, like every Vash video I saw was taking advantage of exploits instead of like learning the fight, which is super annoying um, because the cores didn't work right on the PTR. Like they fixed it shortly before, but no one bothered to do it right. They just wanted to, to cheese the cores. Because what happens with the cores in the PTR, in any video I could find about it, um, is that uh, you could um, you could group loot them, and then whoever, someone would just be the role lead and everyone else would pass. And it would instantly go to that person, they would just dunk it right away. And that's just like a whole big mechanic of the fight that I just, I can't believe nobody would practice that or, or, or do that. So... Uh, Vosh is a fight. There's a, a good amount going on. Um, uh, I'll let it run through here a little bit. I'm, I, we're actually going to switch over to a, another video, uh, because I don't really care for the point of view in this one. So Vosh has this giant ring here. Actually, here, I made a map on VOA. Not a map, but like a thing. Let me see if I can find it. So, um, Vash, uh, basically, if you go on the platform, like above the top step, you're going to aggro her. So when we're, when we're coming up, um, where they're about is, you can see on the, the map I post, not my map, like a visual, um, it, 
is the west side. Uh, that's where they're at, and basically where everybody kind of gathers at the beginning of the fight. Um, the For people who are directionally challenged as far as like orientation, uh, facing forward is not north. Uh, facing left is north. The Where you come in is west and opposite side is east. I literally had to make this because people kept thinking that the opposite side was north. Um, that's just, that's just not the case. So, um, Vasha is a multi-phase fight. Uh, she is in the beginning by herself, then it goes into a, um, probably what people consider the hard part of the fight is the middle, uh, with all the ads where you can't attack her, uh, and then the beginning, or sorry, the end is, is similar to the beginning with one extra mechanic, so, um, in the beginning, Vash has a couple of abilities uh, that make her uh, able to kill people even in the first phase when there's not really much going on. Uh, it's more or less a tank and snake, but she has... Um, one, she will shoot someone if they're not in melee range. She, she prefers to use her bow if you're outside of range. Um, if, if someone's tanking her, though, she will attack. Um, she also uses a multi-shot, which deals damage to multiple people, just as a multi-shot would for a ton of damage. Um, she uses a uh, shock blast, which is does a ton of damage to the tank. Um, the way to get around this, I think it does what nine does nine k nature damage, uh, and it does also does a five second stun. So it's it's both. So it's it's this can never hit the tank. The way to get around this uh, is it can actually be grounded with a grounding totem. So um, we'll need to make sure we have shamans in the group. Uh, I don't know that she does it often enough where we need to rotate two shamans. I'll have to double check from a, point, a tank point of view or like a healer point of view in that group. Um, but it doesn't happen. It, it, it's something that we can work around. Um, but it, it can't hit the tank. If it does, it's not necessarily the tank's going to die. But they might. Uh, she will also do um, entangling roots around anybody in melee range. So it mobilizes everybody that's near her and cause it to take 500 damage. Not a big deal by itself. Uh, this is more of a, a an ability that becomes a bigger deal later on uh, for the last phase. Um, or if anyone in melee range gets hit with uh, the ability static charge. So uh, she will occasionally debuff somebody uh, that will cause them to take 2k damage uh, per tick uh, and do 2k damage to anybody around them uh as well every tick uh so if it's a melee the melee needs to get out immediately you need to find safe harbor you need to get out if it's arranged you should try to stay pre-spread uh, and make sure that you're just moving away from people all of these abilities will uh persist in the last phase of the fight so when, when we go over the last part she still has all of those abilities but there will be additional things to consider otherwise she would just be very easy so um at 70 percent uh, she will run to the middle of the room and she will connect with the four pillars here and uh, become immune. So nothing else can damage her. Um, I do notice that she's at 69% um, with 420 health. Nice. And what we used to do in the private server, which is something we may incorporate, is we used to like drag her out onto like the stairs and then... Um, we would use like minor cooldowns at that point. We wouldn't use like hero or anything, but if you have like an ability with like a small cooldown, um, they would use it at that moment. And then we could usually get her down to like 66, 67% before she actually made it to the middle of the room, which just helps with the last phase a little bit. Um, when we get to phase two of the fight, she does forked lightning. Essentially, she will target a random person and anybody in a cone in that direction will get hit for a significant amount of damage. So, something you want to consider doing when she is um, going towards the middle, if we don't kite her away like that, make sure you're spreading out early. Um, what we probably won't do, and probably why I don't like this, is something... It, I, I'm going to have to take a look, but we're probably not going to do it the way that they're doing it. Um, the first thing that happens is these enchanted elementals will start spawning around the room. Uh, the graphic that I kind of gave before laid it out into sort of zones where I would assign people generally. Uh, these elementals 
Uh, they can't be CC'd, they can't be slowed, they don't attack, they are just on a patrol to go directly to Vosh. If they get to Vosh, uh, they will suicide and she gets a permanent buff that stacks. Uh, that will affect her for the rest of the fight, including the forked lightning that she puts out in this phase. You don't want any of those to hit her. It's not necessarily a wipe if they get to her, but it makes the fight significantly harder. More than a couple, probably a wipe. Um, what will also happen is, um, before we get to the bigger ads, is instead of these enchanted elementals, uh, there will be, um, what are they called? Tainted. Tainted <laughs> elementals. Um, I think he sees a couple of them later, so I'll, I'll just look if we do kind of roll, because he spends a lot of time on the stairs here. The tainted elementals will spawn down along the water line, uh, and they're green color. And what they do is instead of moving, they start launching out like uh, poison bolts on people in the raid. Um, not particularly dangerous in any way, uh, but what they do is they, they drop uh, core. Uh, the core is an item that needs to be picked up. Uh, when you pick it up, you cannot move. Uh, and you can throw it though, um, to other people. And what the idea is, is you take that core and you relay it to people in the, someone in the middle. It'll take a couple of throws to get there. Uh, more if it's on the opposite side and someone near one of those pylons, uh, will use the core to, um, disable these. Once you get four cores, then the boss, uh, is no longer immune and you fight her also each one of the cores you kill reduces her hit points by five percent so she goes into the phase this phase at 70 percent and phase three she'll start at 50 percent um and these ads will stop spawning so that's the that's the main mechanic of the stairs essentially where i am likely to change it we don't have a lot of melee and i don't like assigning melee necessarily to the stairs because they what, what ends up happening is there's a lot of dead time. Like, if you see this person running around, there's a lot of time where they're just not doing anything because they're trying to run between these ads. And that's sort of how we did it on VO8, and I don't really like it because also when there's a tainted elemental, you might just be too far to re reasonably get over to there. So what we will likely do is assign uh, range DPS to sections, um, especially hunters, to be able to uh, quickly dispatch of those. Because once, because if you don't kill the uh, tainted elemental in 15 seconds, it just disappears, and then you have to wait for the next one, and that just extends the fight um, by uh, 50 seconds, which is probably a wipe uh, if you miss one of them. So uh, if you have ranged DPS that are like managing sections, they can immediately spot it and DPS them without having to like, get on top of them. Once it's dead, you have time to go pick up the, the core. It doesn't impact the next timer for the next elemental. Um, now, if anyone dies with the core, it does disappear. So I need to make sure we're healing those people. So uh, ideally, what would happen is, and I'll go over the rest of these ads here. I know there's a lot going on there. Um, ideally, what would happen is, like I said, ranged are assigned to sections. Um, you attack any elementals that you can. You may not be able to kill all of them. That's totally fine. You don't have to kill all of them. Um, what is probably more helpful is that you kill what few you can and try to lower the health of the remainder of them. Um, those elementals will start getting closer to the middle of the room where the other DPS who are not assigned to the stairs will make sure that they're watching those and killing them before they get to the boss. So it'll be sort of a relay with that is that you're not trying to kill all of them in a section. You're just trying to mitigate how many are getting past you and especially making sure that you're watching the Tainted. If a Tainted comes up, you're stopping all damage. He kind of messed up during that fight where he didn't switch immediately to the Tainted Elemental. Um, and let's go back here to the next one where they pull. Um, and I know that there's at least some where I was watching him before where they just despawn. Um, but... I, I, I don't like this video or any other videos because, like I said, they don't show the relay at all, which is probably one of the, not harder, it's not hard to do, but it's time consuming uh, if people are not ready to relay it and trying to communicate who has it, who they're throwing to, um, and we'll have, we'll have macros for that, but um, it will be one of those things where there has to be voice communicated. And at the same time, you know, people are calling out, you know, that there are, 
you know, ad spawning and who we're focusing on and where to avoid and, um, you know, who needs heals or there'd be a lot of communication going on. Um, what I would prefer, and I think I'm going to pull up another video here, is going to be closer to how this other video is. See if I can get it to load. All right, can you see the new window here? All right, this is from a uh, Fury Warrior point of view. So how they do that is it's going to be closer to how I kind of want to try it instead. Um, so there will be two two other ads that need to be managed during the second phase. Uh, first one will be um, the larger Naga that come out. Um, they're just melee ads. Uh, they cleave. They do some decent damage to tanks. Um, they don't really have any other notable abilities other than, than the cleave. Um, but those are going to be tanked and we're going to take them basically like right near the middle of the room. Um, this will do a couple things. One, this will make sure that, um, melee are not going to be encountering the strider that's going around. And two, uh, that will let, make it so that melee are able to easily peel off if any of the ads get within this inner ring. So if any of the other elementals, so, uh, we're going to be taking the Naga in the middle. If like the other elementals that come up the stairs, uh, make it past the stairs, make it past the outer ring, get to the towards the inner ring. Uh, your job is to split off and kill those. Um, it's basically everybody's job to make sure that none of those get to Vosh. It's So if someone's like, uh, I'll just let someone else deal with that, it's basically everyone's job. It's just depending on where they're at, whose focus it is. So stairs and just beyond the stairs here is going to be whoever is assigned to that section. If beyond that point, it's going to be ranged until it gets to the inner ring. Um, Really, I mean, if the if the if the melee aren't focusing it, the range you still need to, to 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 watch it. Melee, if it gets anywhere within this inner ring here, uh, you need to be you need to kill it. They they don't have a lot of hit points. You should be able to kill them very quickly. It's okay to switch off of the elite and come back, uh, but they cannot get the vash. So uh, we'll see a little bit of that in this video here. Uh, the last ad is the Strider. The Strider will come up. It's the big. Uh, mob that it looks like the um, uh, the boss at the end of Underbog, uh, the the big with the giant legs. Um, those are going to be kited um, generally by uh, Julia if she's there, just because it's easy for shamans to do a bunch of upfront threat and kind of pump some of that on the move. Um, they are um, rootable and stunnable, so uh, you can use the uh, tailoring nets on them, you can stun them, uh, but the melee cannot go on them because it will constantly pulse a uh, AoE fear. It's actually more of like an AoE horrify uh, that just like makes you run away and run away really fast. Um, and also can't be tanked for not just because of the fear, but because um, the... Um, what does it say? That does a, does a decent amount of damage too. So it has to be kited. Um, so the ranged, if you know, you're know you not currently dealing with an elemental, your primary focus is going to be the strider. Melee, your primary focus is going to be the melee naga. Deal with the elementals as you can. Um, you know, If your ad's not up, then just switch to taking care of some elementals uh, like this guy's doing, which is perfect. There's no, you know, there's no elite naga up, so he's just helping with some of these elementals before they even get to the middle. Uh, and wait till like it's a tank on it and then switch back to it. But uh, this will basically persist. This whole phase just keeps going until you dunk the last um, last core. Now, the uh, important thing is, is that these ads are on timers. And you want to try to have not the elementals themselves, but like the Naga and the Strider. Uh, they don't go away in the last phase. You have to kill them. So 
it's okay to, to pop the first three right away, but the going into the last one, whoever has the core that's next to the last pylon, do not ever dunk it unless I give the okay. I will tell you when it's okay to dunk because I need to make sure that we're timing it um, with the spawn of the ads. And if I if you have the core, you have to be ready to, to do it when I call it. So if I call it, you're not doing it like, you know, five seconds later. You're doing it when I call for it. This guy cleaved and died. Uh, but the um, what we're going to try to do, if you can take a look here, like there's like 20 seconds next less for the next strider, you know, 21 seconds for like for the next Naga, we usually want to dunk it like a couple seconds before the next spawn wave because this timer could be off a little bit. First thing that will happen, clearing all the ads. So making sure that, one, again, none of these elementals are making it to the boss. We're finishing not just the Strider, but also the Elite. If you, if ranged, if you finish the uh, Strider, help with the Elite. Melee, don't go on the Strider ever. So even if you kill the Naga and all the elementals are dead and the Strider's still up, you're just going to switch to Vosh. Let's see if I can get past the point where they actually get to the Vosh in the last phase. Okay, there's one left here. So there's there's one. So phase three, aside from dealing with the ads that are still remaining, um, she does have one additional mechanic that happens in the last phase. So you'll just have to worry about grounding totem for you know the the boss. You'll just have to worry about um, you know the roots and the static um, that happens to, that that gets put on someone that damages everyone around you. Um, but with the added bonus that she's going to start spawning uh, spore bats that are going to fly really high up above the raid, uh, they can be reached and they can be killed uh, if you have bonus range. Um, so that at the beginning will be um, mostly on the hunters or anyone else that has added range to their casts. Um, I think warlocks are okay with dealing with that. But there's you only DPS them for a little while because as the fight goes on, they start to spawn faster. And what these spore bats do is they don't actually attack anybody. What they do is they'll drop these um, um, poison clouds on the ground uh, that do a significant amount of damage every second. Um, when those green spores, when those green patches spawn on the ground, it does not matter what you are doing. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of a heal. It doesn't matter what's going on. You need to move. You need to get out of that. You need to find a safe space. Okay. Um, for melee, um, I would recommend um, having both free action potions as well as living action potions. Um, now, free action potions, I would suggest using uh, when the boss is basically execute range. Just to make sure that you're not going to get any of the entangling roots on you that are going to hold you in the poison and kill you. Um, the... Free act, or sorry, the the uh, living action potion removes roots. It makes you immune for a few seconds, but you're only gonna need it for just the one. That you want to use if you get rooted in poison. So if you're at this stage of the fight, she drops a, a bat drops a poison cloud and you get rooted in it. That's gonna be your living action potion. Like if you got rooted right here, you need the living action potion. Get out. Um, they you you know you can free them and get out of it, but. Um, it's going to happen so fast that you can't rely on a paladin to freedom you. And there's, you know, not enough, necessarily enough freedoms to go around or that paladins necessarily know that you're rooted in the poison. So you, you've seen our paladins, Bob, I wouldn't trust a freedom. <laughs> oh, and a, another mechanic I forgot to mention is that also during this phase, um, she will also mind control anyone that's not the tank. Um, she'll mind control a few people. Uh, obviously, please don't kill people. Um, I think there's some CCs that that work. But I don't think all CCs work on them. Like I don't think you can sheep as far as I'm aware. But I think like they can be stunned. There's I, as far as I have to take a look into that. I don't remember exactly what CCs work. Um, I don't think you can get out with any of immunities. In fact, I've seen. I think I've seen a paladin get it. And then the mind control made them use a bubble and it didn't get removed. So I don't think ice block or bubble or anything works on getting out of the mind control. Um, but yeah, so uh, basically at this point in the fight where, you know, they're not being able to keep up with the bats um, is when all the DPS would basically just hard switch to Vosh. These poison clouds that are coming down, 
Um, you're just going to start avoiding them. Uh, they will stay alone for a while. They will disappear after some time, uh, but not right away. Like, here, everyone's getting stuck in this poison. Like, this is where you would use a free action potion. But because they don't have one, they just die. Or is that free action? Uh, living action um, to get out of that. Those are expensive, I know, but it's probably worth keeping a few of them in the event that that happens. Because that could be the difference between Bosch dying or not, if all the melee die. Or reroll Gnome, either way. Or Gnome. Yeah, that works too. Um, yeah, but again, also you see the static still happening and still doing damage to everybody around them. I don't even know why this person right now. They're in the middle of not hitting anybody and they ran through a bunch of people. Um, but um, this is, yeah, it's very much a, a, a soft enrage here uh, because eventually the platform's going to be too filled with all these spores uh, that the raid just won't be able to keep up. And you can see the raid's just slowly losing people. Um, you know, you're taking damage from the AOE. Um, the uh, mind controls are killing people. Um, something else that's unfortunate is that if you are in the poison, if you are standing in the poison, and you're getting ready to move, but then you get mind controlled, uh, you actually still take damage from the poison and you'll die. Even though it's, she has you mind controlled. So... Um, I think if you step into it while mind controlled, it doesn't do damage. But if you're already in it when you get mind controlled, it will kill you. So another reason to move immediately. Um, yeah, a lot going on in that fight. Um, any questions about any of the phases? You know, as far as like the ads, the cores. Uh, One lust. Lust is last phase. Lust is basically as soon as phase three starts. Because you want to use that to kill the adds right away. And that's your time when you have the most available DPS on the boss. And there's no pools on the ground. At least not, not really any yet. Um, so that's the time you want, you want to be, be hitting it right away. There's a lot going on in this fight, as you can see. It's big that you don't get overwhelmed and just focus on your responsibilities. And trust other people to do theirs. And uh, we'll get through it easy. Right, yeah, there, exactly. Like, if, if there's a lot of elementals that are spawning literally all over the platform, there's the, the Naga, there's the Strider, there's the Core Lightning, there's the Core. Like, there's a lot going on, but exactly right. Like, everyone's, like, key, re like key responsibilities are probably only one or two things. So, um, a lot of this is going to be, uh, like, zone healing for healers. Um, like we're going to be assigned to certain areas, uh, and making sure that many times, um, like if you're a healer, uh, you're going to be the primary core, like the first, uh, um, person getting the core thrown to them. Uh, like if there's a, like, let's say there's a, like at the top here where that healer is standing, uh, if a, you know, a hunter kills the ad, they have to go down there and get the core. They're going to be stuck. They're going to have to relay it to you. So if you are assigned to the edges anywhere to like heal, not only are you assigned to 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 heal like whoever's in that that around you, uh, but whoever is in the area is your primary responsibility to heal. Not only responsibility because you're the both of you aren't going to be taking enough damage where like you only have to heal yourself, uh, but you need to be in a position where you can heal that person. Um, and uh, you're also going to be in charge of cores. If you are like in the middle, um, generally you won't have relay but like like responsibilities other than just getting one thrown to you to dunk eventually. Um, but um, you need to realize that the people on the outside are not really your responsibility because they're going to be on the edges of the stairs. You're not running over to heal them. It's more making sure that the tanks stay alive basically in the middle and that the other DPS, which are kind of be, most of the range are going to be right around in the middle. They're not going to be running around the edges, um, are staying alive through the fork lightnings. Um, for DPS, like just make sure that you are just focusing on whatever your task at hand is. Melee, you're killing the Naga and any elementals get close. If the Naga's dead and there's not another one spawned yet, go feel free to go kill some elementals. Just make sure you're back to kill the Naga. Uh, ranged, you know, your your primary responsibility is is the the elementals as well that are starting to get close. Um, with the strider being your primary, like main target, I guess you can say. 
Um, you can help clear up the Naga if you want uh, with some extra damage as long as none of the elementals are getting close. Uh, but um, that's, the, the, that's the distinction there. Um, and then the, the tanks, there's not a ton to tank. Um, I think I was told Cash this is basically he'll be um, likely just DPSing on this fight because there's only ever maybe one Naga, possibly two if we fall behind. And other than that, there's nothing to tank. There's one kite target, and that's it. So, um, but we don't have a ton of melee, and just the melee being on the Naga, I think, is going to be pretty sufficient to kill them. But that's uh, that's SSC. Any other questions or comments or suggestions or anything else? Do you mind going through it again real quick? Yeah, so the first poll, uh, 